Hello my fellow gamers and welcome once again to Petaphilos of Videos. Today I have for you the first look and introduction to Planet Zoo. The gameplay that you are currently watching is from the closed beta, which started on the 24th of September and ends on the 8th of October. This game is made by the developers and publishers Frontline Developments, who among other games have also made Planet Coaster, Jurassic World Evolution and Elite Dangerous. Planet Zoo is the latest addition to their Planet franchise, an original franchise, whose world is populated by uniquely wacky characters with their own language who are visitors to your attractions. In this game, you are the manager of an animal zoo, and your aim is to build the biggest and the best looking zoo in the world, connect them into a franchise and breed happy animals. The game features not one, not two, but three completely separate game modes, called Career, Sandbox and Franchise, but more on this a bit later. The game comes out officially on the 5th of November with over 50 animal species. What I would like to hear from you is what is your favorite animal species that you would like to keep in your own zoo. Besides the content that comes out along with the game, players will be able to create habitat blueprints in the game and then share them with other players using the Steam Workshop. There is also a host of new content being prepared to be added to the game after the release. Because one of the game modes, Franchise, is an online mode, players will be able to cooperate in community challenges created by the developers to achieve global objectives which will result in prizes for the players. The core gameplay of this game is of course caring for the animals in your zoo. You need to provide them with suitable environment, room to roam, water, food, climbing opportunities, matching terrain types, plant coverage and even the appropriate temperature and a lot more. This is all while juggling the social needs of the animal and the increasing space requirements as they reproduce and fill up their habitat. And the animal's social needs are very complex to fulfill. For example, having multiple bulls in the same habitat will likely cause them to fight to establish the dominant male. This is especially true where there are also females in the same habitat. You will need to separate the bulls or trade them with the other players because enrichment items alone, toys in other words, aren't going to placate an angry elephant. Animal husbandry in terms of maintaining genetic diversity is also important for animal well-being, and keeping an eye on the adoption market is an important factor in making this happen. More on the market a bit later. Animal diversity in your zoo is primarily important to attract high number of guests, visitors in other words, while low diversity equals low guest numbers, which in turn means low income and no profit for your zoo. Your guests can come into the single species zoo, but only to get a great view and not have a great experience, and they won't pay highly for such a thing. Animals grow up in the zoo, they go from a juvenile to an adult, but their adult phase scales depending on their age and their genetics. They can also get sick if not taken care of, or if there is very little genetic diversity in their lineage, lineage meaning their parents. The animals will of course eventually die of old age, which is why it is important to have a breeding program or at least import new specimens from the in-game market. Zoo guests and animals do interact with each other, guests stop to view the animals and potentially take photos of them. Placing your feeders where the animals will feed near your guest viewing ports will help them get a really good view of your animals, but it will also increase the stress on the animals but on the other hand increases the happiness of the experience of the viewers, your guests. Badly behaved guests can throw their leftover food into their habitats, which animals will eat and can potentially get very sick from, so you have to make sure to have plenty of bins for the trash and a well-trained security guard on standby. There is also a diverse set of staff in the zoo, each of whom has their own important role to play in maintaining the zoo and its animals. Hiring the right number of staff, training them and possibly most importantly, making sure that the facilities they use are in close proximity to the animal habitats that they are looking after, creates a loop in management efficiency. The staff members also have their own needs, so they have to be managed in terms of pay, training and their roster. Veterinarians can transport animals to and from different habitats and to the vet clinic. They also visit the animals in their own habitats to learn more about them before constructing in-depth research on their species in the research center. It is very important for your zoo to have a good research rating so you can unlock access to new animals and habitat enrichment items, in other words, toys. A very happy veterinarian is a fast vet. If your staff member gets paid a good wage and he's trained up, 
They will be fast at healing your animals and getting them back into their habitats for display or breeding. All facilities need to be powered and both power buildings and facilities themselves must be kept away from the guests. Otherwise, it ruins their experience, lowering the zoo's attractiveness and its profits. There are many facilities in Plant Zoo. So, this is what we have. The Keeper's Hut, where food for the animals is prepared in. Power facility, which provides power to all the buildings and objects that require it within a certain distance. Quarantine, which is mainly used to separate infectious animals from healthy ones, to prevent the spread of an illness or to hold animals from a new zoo to check aren't they maybe harboring an illness that is not apparent yet. The research center used by vets to research animals and improve the zoo's understanding of them. Then there's the staff room, which staff go to rest and receive training. The trade center, where animals enter and exit the zoo. And if an animal becomes ill or injured, there's the veterinarian surgery, where they will be treated. There's of course the water treatment plants, where all the water bodies are cleaned within a certain distance of the plant. And at the end, there's the workshop in which mechanics perform their research, unlocking new items for the zoo to use. Spatial management, use of work zones and special staff paths is critical to ma maintaining a high level of attractiveness of the zoo because of all these facilities that you need to have next to your environment where you keep the animals, which are called habitats. Now back to the mods. The franchise mod will let you trade animals with your fellow community and work together towards improving animal welfare and conservation efforts. Trading allows you to list your animals in a trade center. Other players can then purchase and adopt your animals to add to their own collection and help maintain their genetic diversity. Naturally, you can also choose to adopt animals from the other players' franchises to further your zoo too. In career mode, the main story mode of the game, the first couple of scenarios are tutorial focused, while the rest will let you experience the full story, complete with memorable characters, while learning more about the animals and the zoo management. In the sandbox mode, you will be able to play the game freely and create whatever zoo you imagine using everything the game has to offer. Cash of course is brought into the zoo by the guests, your visitors, and it is what they use to pay the entrance fee, make donations and purchase items such as food, drink and other small items. Cash is mostly used to pay staff wages, look after running costs and building of the zoo's infrastructure, but it can also be used to pay for the adoption of some of the animals. But conservation credits are the second form of currency and they are earned by undertaking certain objectives. These are the primary form of currency in animal adoptions and trading. On a basic level, varying weather conditions bring a beauty and liveliness to the zoos. Beyond that, they also bring out interesting behaviors in the animals. The weather ranges from sunny to cloudy, light and heavy rain, even snows, and a wide range of temperatures. Animals seeking shelter in the rain and snow and taking a dive in the hot sun are only a couple of ways that the animals will react to the changing weather. Every species of animal has evolved to thrive in a particular climate. In bringing animals from all over the world into your zoo, you're going to encounter challenges in satisfying each species' temperature needs. Which is why there is a special addition to the habitat in form of a heater or a cooler that comes very handy. Building a suitable habitat for a species far from its natural environment is always a satisfying problem to solve. As you saw in this gameplay as I was trying to make sure that these Bengal tigers do have the exact environment that they like to live in. And that environment is created by a lot of factors that you have to take in account one by one. The terrain, the vegetation, the temperature and so on. But not only the animals are affected by the weather, guests will shiver in the cold weather, sweat in the hot weather, and if you choose to sell them, they'll purchase umbrellas to protect themselves from the rain. This will of course all depend on the biome, that is, the type of environment that your zoo is located at. As this is just the closed beta, I will not talk too much about the performance and graphics as they are subject to change, besides noting how beautiful the art style is and just how much care and effort was put into the animals to make them look, feel and act as real as possible. Music is spot on and the sounds of the animals, staff, visitors all merge together to give that familiar background noise of a real animal zoo. If you want to see more videos about this game on my channel, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next video.